All right, so to take a Revit file and export it to an ADSK file so that a civil engineer can import it into civil 3D, the first thing we're going to play with is a survey point, basically origin point. So I'm going to go into my site plan. And in here, you'll notice down here in the bottom left corner, I've got a circle and a little triangle kind of nested in there. I've got two different points in there. So I'm going to go ahead and filter this out. One's a project base point, one's a survey point. Um, the really, the only thing we're focused on for this demonstration is the civil survey point. So let me drag this over to the side so we can see what it is. But notice on here, survey point internal. It's a shared site, the north, south, east, west elevation. Now the elevation really isn't too important to deal with. Uh, the most important piece to really worry about is actually the, the civil. And the reason why is that's going as the north, south, east, west. That's just worrying about the orientation of the building, where it's sitting in general to other uh, objects in the projects. Obviously, the civil engineer is going to give you this file, or not file, excuse me, those points. So once you set that up, that's all the coordination needed to do to actually export out a file. So the next thing we're going to do is I like to clean the file up a little bit. Um, it helps it easier on the civil engineer when they don't have all the stuff out of the way. So I'm just going to turn some stuff off, move grids off, the geometry, I'm just making a little bit cleaner file, nicer to read, easier to understand. The next thing I want to do is for a 3D view, we do have to have a 3D view exported out. So I'm going to duplicate one of these views and call it 3D for export to civil. And if I open up this view, notice how simple it is. It's real basic. It's got a footprint. It's got the exterior skin and core, interior partitions. I can rotate around and you'll notice that's all there is to it. I don't have any site plans on here. I don't have any logistics. I don't have any plants. Nothing that's really going to bog it down for the civil engineer. Once I do that, I'm good to export. A uh, real simple thing, just come up here to application, export, and building site right there. Exports an ADSK chain exchange file. So once I select that, it sends me into this little new mode. So over here you can see the civil 3D view, and I can you know rotate around to see the same thing. You'll see the survey point right over there. Um, I can't select the survey point from here, but that's all right. The next thing it does is it exports all the information here. It tells you what you're actually exporting in that ADSK file. You know, the utility connections that I put in that the civil engineer can use and actually connect to in their file as well. The gross building plan, of course, is the first floor because that's what I want. That's really the main footprint of the building. If I had any property lines, they'd be here. Then I got project information, so I got the project name, project address, and the building type. And notice this building type, what it really affects is this information right here. So if I change it from office to, say, dormitory, notice the area per person changes. Total. So all that really affects is that. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, you can override these if you want. If you know the area per person is actually 315, you can go in here just by clicking this and typing it in. Here is here as well. So once that's done, the next thing you'll do is go to site. And it will give you, make sure you, it will say clipped, and it will give you the information you have. It will say unclipped, and this information you can edit right here. So you can do it either way. Um, it's just easier to do it clipped because you don't have to worry about accidentally putting in the wrong coordinates. Once, that done, once that's done, you just go ahead and hit next. You select where you want to save that file, name it, and hit OK. So now it's exporting the ADSK file, and it's actually creating a report for us as well. So once that report is actually created, it's really used for, you can send it to the engineer if you want. Um, it's really used for in-house stuff typically, but it goes through everything you've exported. It gives you information, lets you know what the status was of stuff, which doors went out. So it can be a really handy tool if you need to give this to the engineer so they can understand what's actually going on on the site. Um, so just keep that in mind. It does create this report, and you can export this out. Once that's done, you just email that file to the civil engineer, and they will go ahead and import it in. We'll hand it over to Sean and let him show us how to do that. 3D, we want to import that ADSK file that was just exported from Revit. Um, if you go to the Insert tab on your ribbon, under Import, there's Import Building Site. You can go ahead and select that, um, browse to the file, going to go to this ADSK file that Jordan exported. Give it a second here. Let's 
Okay. And it'll show you a view, kind of a, a window area, what it uh, is going to look like. You have your view cube, so you can rotate and you can take a look at it. Um, you can name your building site if you wanted to. Um, just leave it as default and hit next. Confirm the units. That's the units from our civil 3D, um, our coordinate system, description, um, drawing scale, so forth. Going to hit next. Display properties. Uh, again, just a quick style in civil 3D. What layer do you want it to go to? You can set your layer. I'm going to hit next again. Insertion point. Now this is the insertion point that uh, was set in Revit. You can override it. You can specify in drawing and just pick a point. Um, it should be correct, so you should just be able to leave it uh, as default and then just hit finish. So you can see here that it's uh, imported it in. I've got a couple views up. I've just got my plan view and I've got a 3D view. Um, you can select this thing and it's going to give a, a few different grips in here. It's going to give your base point grip uh, as well as all the utility grips um, that you can snap your pipe networks to, you can snap your line work to. Um, these ones here with the, the plus signs are the utility locations, the, the connection points. Um, so you can snap your stuff to that. This one is a, a base point. You can grab that base point and you can move it all anywhere you want if you um, didn't like the location of it. Um, so again, you can see plan view and uh, 3D view. It, it is a full exterior model. It's even got the interior walls and stuff, but it's good for grading. It's good for walkout basements, uh, underground parking, any type of walls used for retaining and, and so forth. So. Uh, if the architect makes a change to the file, uh, you don't have to re-import it. You can just uh, basically like an XREF, treat it like an XREF. If you go to your Prospector tab, you'll see that there's a Building Site option. If you come into this Building Site uh, and right-click on it, you can update the Building Site definition. So if I select Update Building Site Definition and I go to the revised ADS key file from the architect, uh, double-click that, Give it a second. If you watch there on the right side, you'll see that uh, a new addition is overriding our parking area. So you can see right in there. So you can see you know, both plan and, and uh, 3D, uh, those changes make without having to do the, the re-import. So, um, now Jordan's going to import a topo file into, into Revit. You don't have to do anything in Civil 3D. Um, it's a good idea to maybe clean it up a little bit, make sure that the file's down, there's no errors, there's no X references in there, uh, and then send it over to the architect. All right, so now that I've got the Civil 3D file from the engineer, the next thing I'm going to do is link that file into this, uh, into my site plan. So if I go into uh, my insert tab up here on the ribbon, I go to link CAD, I select link CAD and then I go in and actually find where that civil file is. So I'll go find that file. It's right there. The next thing I want to do is, you know, change my positioning. Is it center to center, origin, origin, or by shared coordinates? For what I did, I, it's by shared coordinates or origin, origin. They're, they're basically both going to be the same. So I'll go ahead and do that. I would hit open. And for time and tense and purposes, I've already linked it in. So I'll just go ahead and unhide it so we can actually see it. So now that I've brought that civil file in, now the next step I want to do is I need to attach a topo surface to that file. So what I would do is go massing in site, hit topo surface, I'd go to create from import and select import instance. Now for time intents and purposes, I'm not actually going to do it. But I will show you once I select that file, it brings up this dialog box. So I'm going to want to know what their contour lines are, their majors and their minors and any depreciations in there. So that will actually help me understand uh, if I understand the naming convention now, if this one's obviously done correctly, in my opinion, it's C topo major or minor, I would select those. Some people do have a different slightly na uh, naming convention that you'll need to kind of adjust to or maybe un at least know from their perspective where to actually select those uh, major or minor contour lines. So once you do that, you would hit OK. And it actually will create, you would hit the Finish button, and it will create a three-dimensional topo surface on top of that Civil 3D file. Now, a lot of the questions I get is, okay, will it 
show up when I relink the file in? If the civil engineer changes the grading, is it going to actually show up? And unfortunately, it will not show up. Um, it does not follow that along. So if the civil engineer changes his file and you re reload it or refresh it back in your file, it is not going to change the topo surface. You'll need to manually go in and actually do that or just create a new topo surface. So notice that this topo surface is in here now, and I've got some trees already put onto it. There it is. It actually follows the grading and the drop and everything. Now, keep in mind that a building on top of this topo surface will not generally automatically cut the topo. You need to go in and put under your massing and site an actual building or pad around the footprint so that it cuts the topo surface out. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of earth going right through your building sections. So that's basically all there is to it. Um, there's not much more information uh, to go over on that end. Uh, should you have any questions, please feel free to email myself or Sean Herring. And thanks for your time. You guys have a great day.